Today we're going to take a look at how to build a camera obscura like the one I'm using to film myself with right now and then how to create digital images with it using a portable document scanner. Hey everyone, Sean here with photodeox.com and that's right, I'm currently filming myself with a homemade camera obscura that I built with a cardboard box, a magnifying glass, and some frosted plastic. Super simple to build and fairly simple to take pictures with it. You just put a digital camera behind it like I'm doing now. But what if there was a way to digitize the ground glass on the back of the camera to create a true digital large format camera? Well, that's actually totally possible using a cheap portable document scanner like this little eye scan. Let me show you how I did it. Camera obscures are the oldest cameras in existence. Uh, basically, they're just a box with a lens or a pinhole on the front and then reflective material on the back like frosted glass or in this case frosted plastic. And artists and engineers would build these, they would point them at a landscape or architecture and then they would trace it and that would be an accurate reference for a painting uh, or for drawing up plans. When film was invented and later digital, camera obscures became a much more obscure tool. See what I did there. Artists still use them occasionally, but aside from that, they're really not used that often. But I've always been fascinated with them. And last year, I actually made a type of camera obscura. I took a portable flatbed scanner, I turned the glass on the front of it to a ground glass, and then I mounted a four x five camera on top of it to create a scannera basically a large format camera that instead of using film, it uses a scanner to scan the 4x5 image. And since then, I've been thinking, would it be possible to go even larger format? Well, recently I was on the internet and I saw this little iScan, $50 portable document scanner, and I realized I don't need a flatbed scanner. I can simply use one of these things to scan the ground glass of a camera obscura. So that's what I did. Like I said, camera obscures are pretty basic. You've got the optic on the front. In this case, this is a magnifying glass that I got at Target. Uh, and then on the back, you have some sort of frosted material uh, that can capture the image that the lens is pointing at. And I actually got this piece in this vintage copy kit. Uh, this was a kit designed to point a home movie projector uh, into a mirror and then it would bounce the image onto this frosted plastic and then you could record it with a VHS camera. Found it at a thrift store for a couple bucks. I took the frosted plastic out and then I taped it on one side of a cardboard box, cut a hole, taped it in place. Then I took the other half of the cardboard box and then I cut a hole for the magnifying glass. And then you'll see I left the flaps of the inner box there, but I cut off the outer box, uh, left the outer box on the top and bottom intact and then basically, I can slide the two together. And this is essential for focusing because depending on how far away my subject is, I have to move it out to focus closer up and move it in to focus farther away. And I've actually found that about here is infinity and then to get to like four or five feet focus, you gotta come out to about here. And the other fun thing about this setup is because it's so flexible, because it's not rigid, I can actually do camera movement. So I can pull it in, push it out, so I can do selective focusing, which is pretty fun. I also duct taped a tripod plate to the camera so I could use it on a tripod when necessary. Now the optical quality of this magnifying glass is not great. It has very soft edges, but I love that lo-fi look, so I've totally embraced it. And I love that you can just tape a magnifying glass to the front of a cardboard box with some frosted plastic or glass, and you basically have yourself a camera obscura. Super cheap. This whole setup only cost me like 10 bucks. Now, if you do get your own ground glass or frosted plastic, it probably will cost a little more. You can get five by seven or four by five sheets on eBay. They're a little pricey, so you might wanna keep an eye out for a copy kit instead, much cheaper. And uh, I do like, because it's frosted plastic, it makes the whole setup way lighter. Okay, that's the camera obscura. Now for the iScan portable scanner. Super simple, you just press this button to turn it on and then you simply choose JPEG or PDF. I use JPEG and then you just push this to pick your DPI. You've got three resolutions to choose from. Then you just put the document scanner at the bottom of the ground glass, push the scan button 
and then slowly slide up the ground glass. Now what's interesting with this process is you're not capturing the image all at once, you're capturing it from side to side. So rather than a digital sensor that just captures all the information at once, you're getting it from right to left, left to right. And that means if you have any motion in your shot, it's going to see it. Like for instance, in this portrait, the subject moved his hands. Uh, so as I was scanning them, I get this really weird wiggly effect. And in this other shot, the first one I had my two subjects standing still, but the second one halfway through the scan, I was about here, I told them to run out of the shot and you can see that they're just cut off in the middle. So that's one of the challenges of using a scanner to create a photo. You really need a still life or you need your subject to be very still. The other thing I ran into is you really need your ground glass to be dark. Uh, you don't want light hitting it as you're scanning because that can ruin the image. So I found that this piece of black fabric does the trick. Basically when I set up my shot, I just cover the ground glass and then I put my head under there and then I scan in darkness so I get a much more even image and I don't have to worry about light coming in and polluting the final image. And I also found that the scanner has a fixed ISO. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but in low light, it works fine with the magnifying glass all the way open, but in sunlight, images get blown out. So I just created this simple aperture plate. I just put it behind the lens, tape it back there uh, when I'm shooting in bright sunlight. Now, one of the things I found with using a document scanner to create large format images is it's not going to give you the quality that you get with film. Not only is it fairly low resolution, it also adds a lot of weird noise, which I'm assuming has to do with the technology of the scanner. It's designed to scan flat documents on a table. It's not designed to scan light hitting a ground glass. Uh, so number one, all of your images are black and white. Not really sure exactly how the science works on that. I'm sure someone can explain it in the comments below. But also number two, you get a lot of weird scan lines. Now you can get rid of some of these in post, but I kind of have embraced this look. I like this lo-fi aesthetic. It's kind of a unique genre unto itself, the scanner large format image. Now this look isn't gonna be for everyone. I am a lo-fi photographer, so I do like working with cameras like this. Uh, if you are a hi-fi guy, if you want really, really high quality, large format images, you're probably not gonna wanna use this setup. But I will say that if you do not want to use a document scanner, you can use a camera to photograph the back of the ground glass and just use a dark cloth to cover the camera and the ground glass itself so you get a fairly high-end image. So for example, here is a scanner image taken with the camera obscura, and here's the same image, but with a Sony A7 digital camera photographing the back of the ground glass. And if you use a digital camera and another lens to capture the image, you are gonna get a much higher end, higher quality image. And you can even shoot video through this camera obscura like I did in the intro. Uh, here are some failed intros I tried shooting earlier. And as you can see, you do get all the texture of the ground glass in the video. So it doesn't look as good uh, as just shooting through a normal lens. Although I do kind of like the texture, it does add kind of a unique flavor. And that's about it. Cardboard camera obscura, pretty cheap. I scan document scanner, about 50 bucks and you've got yourself a five by seven or about five by seven large format, lo-fi cardboard homemade DIY camera. That's a mouthful. If you have any questions about this setup, how I built the camera obscura, what kind of scanner I used, comment below, I'd love to help you out. Also click right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos just like this one. I'm Sean with PhotoDeox.com and thanks for watching.